We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to look at some statistics being put out by the World Bank. Well, the World Bank has projected that uh, debt servicing will go up 123.4% of the federal government's revenue in 2023. The document titled Nigeria Public Finance Review, Fiscal Adjustment for Better and Sustainable Development Result projected that debt servicing would go up 102.2% 102, 102 of the federal government's revenue by the end of 2022. Now, in Africa's Paul's report, the Washington-based bank had said that Nigeria's debt service to revenue ratio could stand at 102.3% by the end of 2022. It had described the public debt in Nigeria as concerning due to the rising debt service to revenue ratio. Meanwhile, uh, Nigeria's public debts rose to 44.06 trillion naira in the third quarter of 2022, with the country struggling with a repayment burden. Now, according to publications from the Debt Management Office, a total public debt stock rose from 42.843 trillion naira recorded in the second quarter to 44.06 trillion in the third quarter of 2022. The DMO said that the increase in public debt was due to new borrowing by the federal government to part finance the de deficit in the 2022 Appropriation Act alongside new borrowings by the subnationals that state. It also noted that the total uh, public debt stock consisted of domestic debts of uh, 26.92 trillion and external debt of 17.15 trillion naira. Uh, you know, the conversation is almost endless, but we have to invite our guests to join at this point in time. Ugunna Okuku is an investment and economic development expert. He joins us. Uh, thank you, Ugunna Ogbona, for being part of the show this morning. Well, we also have Professor Kenny Fair, who is a developmental economist and lead consultant uh, of a course. Thank you so much, right, Professor Ken. Yes, thank you for joining. And thank you for having me. For... All right, so um, thank you for joining, gentlemen. Thank you. Let me start with uh, Ubona. What are your thoughts about the statistics, of course, the projection from the World Bank? Uh, we have a lot of Nigerians who are thinking that, you know, this is uh, a boring institution, so it might just, just be a gimmicks, another projection, another, uh, you know, warring statistics just to put us in a sad situation. What are your thoughts, really? Yeah, these are actually realities, you know, and these are conversations that have been, you know, coming up, you know, for the past few years. People have been saying, please, you guys are borrowing so much. Why are we borrowing so much? And then the, the conversation have always been, the response from the government have always been, oh, no, our borrow, you know, our debt to GDP is still very comfortable. We can still borrow. But the issue has always been, how do you repay? What are the plans that you have to repay? So for me, borrowing has never been a problem. Our problem has always been how to get the revenue, how to you know uh, increase our revenue stream as a country to be able to service our debt. So at this point in time, if it is becoming it's not a, it didn't come as a shock to me. I, I knew this time will come when it will become a niche to begin to, you know, to, to either every revenue we make or even, you know, to be able to use that to service our debt. So the, the, the real problem has a lot more revenue. So that is why we are where we are. All right. Uh, uh, Pro Prof. Fifa, this, this statistic, I mean, from the World Bank, 123% um, means that um, obviously another deficit budget, you know, um, if you want to call it that. I, I hope I, am I correct? Uh, then how did Nigeria get to this point? Because I know that uh, there was a, a, a point at which we crossed the line from having a healthy budget, you know, even making money, uh, to now not making any money at all um, and using our entire revenue um, to pay our debts. Uh, so how did we get to this point? I think it was the 20... Uh, 2020 budget or 2019 budget, I'm not sure. But how did we get to the point where we crossed the line to now have a deficit budget? Uh, we've, we've always been borrowing, um, and there's nothing wrong with borrowing. You, you actually, every country borrows, every individual, every business borrows. But the thing is, 
how do you make conscious effort to match your borrowing to the revenue? And that raises a question is if you are going to, how do you tie the infrastructure you are borrowing money for and the potential of that infrastructure to repay the money? If you are going to borrow $800 million to build new terminals in the airports, what kind of revenue stream we are expected to be able to offset that borrowing? So not that you will have a one-to-one -one relationship, though, but at least we'll make that effort. And one ought to see this in the cost-benefit analysis with the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 says needs to be performed. But put that aside, the laws there are very, very clear about what to borrow. It has to be for capital and expenditure and the revenue, and sorry, and the um, human resource, investment in human resources. It also has provisions that has to be a long-term borrowing. So when you hear restructure, it's about shifting much of the short-term borrowing to a medium, long-term borrowing. So there's a lot of stuff. All the things we require are in that law, in that uh, in 2007. But the peculiarity of this borrowing from 2015 was um, a decision by the government to honor the obligations of previous governments. And what has happened is that a lot of contracts have been awarded on infrastructure. And then and we had a situation that when they were coming in that uh, all these people abandoned sites because they couldn't get paid. So you now said, all right, everyone should go back to sites and then I'll find the money whenever I can find it to pay. That's why in all the roads, you will see what's going on. They may not all have been completed, but they are there. But is there a reason to focus on infrastructure? Yes, yes. 30% our stock of infrastructure is about 5%. And when you compare to South Africa, it's about 85%. So we are so far down there in terms of infrastructure. But you cannot use that word infrastructure to cover all the borrowing. You've got to be purposeful. It has to be economic. It has to be capable of repaying the loan. So there are so many things in that mix. Let me come down to your question. How else did we get there? If you need to borrow, in fact, anything you want to do, you have to borrow, you have to invest. The model is this. You invest money, even in fighting corruption, you have to invest in the systems you are going to use and the people you are going to use. If you want to consolidate your MDS, you have to borrow money to, to the structure. Anything you want to do, and if you want to invest, you have to borrow money. Now, the thing is, is if you invest, the investment creates economic activity. Economic activity employs people. People receive revenue. And from that revenue, they have surplus. From that surplus, they will pay for education, health, and all the other things, and poverty reduction, and all of that. So that's the cycle. Don't tell me that, oh, government can borrow, and then you go to the defense community and say, I'm sorry, we are not going to borrow anymore, so you can't get the equipment to fight terrorists. And then you tell the workers, oh, sorry, we can't borrow anymore, because you, you, know, you can't pay their salary. No. Every government tries to have a national savings. From the national savings, you take your money to invest. If you don't have national saving, you have no choice than to go and borrow. And who goes at borrowing goes at sorrowing. That's a simple fact. And we need to understand that we have we have had to deal with. If you look at early early this year, we were looking at 1.2 trillion naira as uh, uh, deficit coming from um, uh, uh, crude. That is what they call your um, subsidy. But as soon as they went to the meeting with the NEC, suddenly this picture changes and the PIA coming on. So we're now told that it's about to be six trillion. And now that means government has to go and borrow 500 billion naira every month just to satisfy the appetite of people who want to continue to borrow to, to service. So these are the sources of the borrowing. Uh, uh, before Mr. comes in, I also want to bring uh, Obona in at this point. Um, I mean, Nigeria in 2006 became uh, the first African country to declare its debt uh, under the Obasanjo administration. Uh, you look at the different um, uh, uh, initiatives for debt forgiveness or debt cancellation. Uh, one of them was, uh, was HIPIC, a highly indebted poor countries initiative. Uh, uh, here, Nigeria wasn't a part of that. Uh, because of uh, certain certain issues, um, uh, one of which was that the country was perceived to have, you know, made enough money from oil and gas to offset its debt. 
Um, so Nigeria is said to have been denied debt relief under both the Naples terms and the Hippic Initiative, at least in part because of its oil wealth, which prevented it from being co considered a poor country. However, Nigeria was still able to do much because Sobasanjo cleared the nation's debts in 2006, the first administration to do so, uh, African country to do so, uh, settled its public debt. Uh, what happened that a country that had a philosophy like this of clearing its debt and being financially healthy now became a country that believed that the best way to fund infrastructure is to get back into the debt trap. Obon, are yeah, you there? These yeah. things are, you know, uh, you know, these things are an ecosystem that when you create, when this is um, is an ecosystem where you have a, a national growth plan and then you follow it through. Now, at the time we got the debt cancellation, there were plans to invest in strategic infrastructure that will help growth, which was why a lot of monies were put into IPP and other, other kinds of transactions that would help, you know, those investments that will help propel the economy. But was he, were we able to follow all these transactions through? I can tell you, no. Were they prudent in trying to manage these activities? I can tell you no. So those efficiencies, those those um, uh, you know those corrupt practices, those um, you know, like I said, those lack of efficiency actually led us back to where we began to have those gaps, and those gaps now created an opportunity for the government to you know go back to borrowing because whether you like it or not, you must continue to wheel you know oil the wheel of of your of your of your, of your existence and, and the economy. So if the the the, the, the money that you are getting from your um from from your the revenue is not enough for you to fund your budget, you have no other choice but to go out and borrow. So my 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 my, my issue has always been serious countries. Nobody depends on rent or when you sell a, you know a crude oil to to fund your budget. We're still we're still discussing tax to GDP, which is still very low. So these are things we need to be able to, you know, expand our revenue sources. We need to be able to have multiple streams of income. We can't be depending on oil and then all other sources are just there. So look at solid minerals. We not done, not be able to do anything with the solid minerals, you know, sector that we have in a, in a, in a country like ours. Human resources have not been able to do so much with it. So my is, there are things we call, we call, we, uh, we, we, we call it natural things given to us, you know, as as men to be able to reinvest them, make more revenue from it, we have not been able to take Obona, advantage Obona, of it. Obona, so we, if we, we have to go to, now, if, if but depend on Obona, Obona, we have to, you know, quickly just wrap it up because we, we don't have so much time on our side. Uh, but just before then, I'd like to Absolutely. have uh, Professor Ife share his thoughts quickly as we coast the conversation down. It's very important. Now, the document says that, uh, you know, uh, borrowing is not the solution for us. I'd like to ask, there's a lot of argument for borrowing, just like you have stated, there's nothing wrong in borrowing as an, you know, company, as an individual, especially when it's for a specific cost. But my question is, if borrowing is not the solution for the Nigerian economy, do we have an alternative? What are the options that we have? No, I think they're, they're, they're not correct there. It's the type of borrowing that we should be talking about. Because it is debt finance, that's what we've been having. So that appears on our balance sheet. But when you switch to asset-based finance, it's a different story altogether. So that's why I said, if you look at the budget, 205 billion naira is expected to come from to privatization proceeds. The privatization and culture is just one way. Uh, if an NPC that is already read with all the laws, enabling laws around it, and it's valued at hundred billion dollars, can go to the capital market and raise ten percent. That will suddenly bring ten billion dollars on the table, and the whole equation changes. It's our own asset. It's owned by Nigerians. So you send the share to people that are Nigerians, the militants, the big companies, all of that. Just like NNG, NNG is giving us revenue every 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 year. So why why are you not going to get from NNPC? If you don't do this, NNPC will continue to run right on the wave of more and more borrowing to subsidize. So right. we're going to have their solutions. Don't tell me that we can borrow. We can't borrow.
Pro and prof, thank you, Prof. We, we have to go. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll have some more time to talk about this. Um, you say we can keep borrowing, but um, I mean, if if uh, all producing country like Nigeria uh, does not have any money coming in at all, not even one co, because you're spending uh, one one hundred twenty three percent of your budget, your your income is gone. You know, then what do we should we stop? maybe, and then start to think about how to fix the future. Another question I wish to ask is, what does the future hold? Are we going to go down the, the road of, of Greece um, in the next few years, all the chaos that we saw there? But thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. Obona Akoku, investment and economic development expert, uh, Professor Ken Fair development economist and lead consultant, ECOWAS. We hope to have you some other time. Thank you very much. Right, thank you for having us. And that's the size of our package this morning. Well, uh, that's the size of it, just like Kofi has mentioned. Uh, we we'll definitely have to go now and return tomorrow. But it's okay to join the conversation because it continues on uh, different uh, social media spaces uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko. Have a great morning. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning. <laughs>